Number 23, complete and balance the following oxidation reduction reactions, which give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atom. And then we have letter A. So we have to finish this reaction under the pretenses of what they tell us, right? They, they told us that we need the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atom. Now remember, We've done tons of problems with oxidation and reduction, right? We know that if an atom is being oxidized, it is losing electrons. I'm just gonna put electrons as E minus because electrons are negative, so like E negative, right? You could think of this as LEO, L-E-O. Losing electrons is oxidation, right? LEO the lion says grr. When you lose electrons, you're really looking like you're becoming more of a positive charge. So when you're losing electrons, you're always going to be, we'll say, gaining positives or becoming more positive. So just a couple of things that we should know before we get into this problem. So we have this problem here, right? And I'm gonna write it on the left-hand side. We have aluminum, right, which is a solid, plus a fluorine, right, which is a gas, and we need to know what the product is. Now, this is a synthesis reaction because I have two independent atoms. I have aluminum and I have fluorine, and they're going to come together to form one compound. That's a synthesis reaction, and it's under the umbrella of an oxidation reduction reaction. One is going to be oxidized. The other one is going to be reduced. Let's see which one is going to be oxidized and which one's going to be reduced. You can't have two oxidations going on and you can't have two reductions. You need to have one of each. But that's why we have our handy dandy chart over here. Now, if we look at our trend, right, and you guys should memorize this trend, it makes life very simple. So if we look at the trend, aluminum, when it's a compound, wants to have a plus three charge. And fluorine, who's over here, when it's in a compound, wants to have a negative one charge. Now, what are the charges when these atoms exist by themselves? We know this, guys, right? If you have an, an atom by itself, either as a single element, right? Oop, what happened? I, I lost my arrow there. Either as a single a um, atom or a diatomic all of the states are zero. So aluminum has a zero charge and fluorine has a zero charge. Now when they make that compound, one has to be oxidized and the other one has to be reduced, right? And maybe I'll just put it up here, right? Aluminum was a zero and the fluorine was a zero. Now who's going to be oxidized and who's going to be reduced, right? The oxidation one, Leo, is the one that goes to being more positive. And looky here, aluminum, when it's a compound, wants to be a plus three. And fluorine, when it wants to be in a compound, it will take the charge of a negative one. So who is becoming more positive? Oh, aluminum is. So I know that aluminum is going to be the plus charge when I make this compound, and fluorine is gonna be the minus charge. And in this case, aluminum, the highest possible oxidation state for aluminum would be the trend. It would be a plus three. Aluminum cannot go higher than a plus three charge. So that's the highest possible charge. So let's see, let's make that compound. We have aluminum, right, being a plus three, and we have a fluorine being a negative one. We know how to make compounds, right? We crisscross those charges. So I crisscross the three down, telling me that I need three fluorines. And I crisscross the one down, telling me that I need one aluminum. So my compound, the end, would be AlF3. Now if you need to add a state, right, this goes by your solubility rules. Fluorine is a halide, right, and usually halides are soluble, which means that they're aqueous, except if it is grouped with a lead, a PB, a mercury, which is HG, or a AG, which is silver. But aluminum 
is not one of those exceptions. So that would mean that this would be aqueous. This whole reaction is happening in a aqueous solution uh, in, in water, right? That's the solvent for these. Now, since we made our compound, all we have, oh, now since we made our equation, right, we got to make sure we balance it. So let's see. Hmm, it looks like I have two fluorines on the left side, but I have three on the right side. How am I going to balance that? There's no number that, you know, I could multiply one to get to the other, right? But what I can do is I can put coefficients in, in front of them, right? What's the common number between two and three? I can both get them up to a six if I multiply each by the other number, right? Two times three is six and three times two is six. So if I put a three, this would tell me that I have six fluorines. And if I put a two here, this tells me that I have six fluorines and that's balanced. And now we just got to balance the aluminum. Let's see, I have one aluminum on this side. I got two aluminums on this side. So what number am I going to put in front of the aluminum on the reactant side? Yeah, definitely a two. And now we did it, guys. We completed it. We balanced the oxidation reaction. And we made sure that aluminum, which was the one that was oxidized, got the highest number. And that number was a plus three. So there you go, guys. This is the answer. Hopefully this helped. I hope it did. And if it did, let me know, right? Love talking to you guys in the comments. And I hope you're doing well. Uh, study hard. And good luck on those tests. All right? If you want to click the like button, that would be cool beans. And see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.